Hi everyone, hope all of you are doing well. Today we are back with one more video and we are going to talk about charting data that is nothing but presenting data. So before we begin this topic, let's do a very quick recap. Okay, so what we have learned so far, we have learned about the importance of why we are using, we are, we are learning this uh, quantitative analysis techniques as part of our MBA curriculum, right? So this is a statistics and probability all these things come under this topic uh, this subject and what what we are going to do here is we are trying to gather information or data through surveying interviewing research and all those things and uh, why we are doing it is to help us understand the data better to help us find the trends and make better business decisions so it is very important that we be able to present our data uh, so that uh, we can gather the uh, info from it right we can gather um, the summary of it as you all know a picture speaks a thousand words no matter how many mathematical computations you have done if you are not able to uh, convert it into some form of a visual representation it is very difficult to convey the meaning in uh, what you can say convey the meaning very fast to another person we, it is very difficult to communicate Right. So, suppose say you have a graph, okay, a bar chart and you have a table. Which one would give you a quicker information? Definitely the bar chart, right? Rather than going through the table trying to find out what it is, if we can plot it in a graph, it is much better. So, uh, this today's video is also about how we can, the different ways in which we can actually represent data to visualize it. So, the last video actually we had posted a quiz. So, uh, I hope all of you have seen it and you know uh, written down your answers. So today in this video we will see what the answers to those questions were. Okay, So the first qu uh, question in that quiz was a bar diagram, the next was a pie chart, the third we had a pictogram, fourth was an ogiv and fifth was a frequency polygon and sixth was a histogram. I hope all of you got it right. And um, uh, so anyway, since, since you knew, know the answers right now, there's no point in going back and uh, seeing, I mean, trying to do that quiz, but still, I'll leave a link somewhere here, okay, so that you can maybe see if you can recognize them when you actually see it, okay. So let's move forward. If you have got all of them correct, then well done, hats off to you. If not, not to worry. So the very first one was a bar diagram. A bar diagram is also called as a column chart. So this is something which we all have seen, right? So it is a pictorial representation of data, generally grouped data in the form of uh, vertical or horizontal rectangular bars. If you go and check in Excel or Word and all, you can also find bar graphs that are like this. Okay, maybe like this also you will find. So this is also a bar diagram. Okay, and this is also a bar diagram, bar chart. Um, and the length of these bars or these rectangles are the frequencies. And this, so if you see a chart like this, this is a pie chart. So it's like the idea is like this is the whole pie and we are dividing that pie into many, many slices. And the size of each of those slices of pie will be proportional to the, uh, what you can say, the frequency. So that is the pie chart. This is also a very good way of representing data. And if you see uh, something like this, this is called a pictograph. So what we do over here is we use symbols, easily conveyable symbols. So if you can see over here, this is an example of a population. Maybe it is something related to humans. That is what we infer. So maybe if, say for example, it might be that the, there were these many number of gents and these many number of women or maybe these many number of employed and these many number of unemployed people in the society, something like that. Definitely all these graphs should have a legend legend associated so that we can properly read these graphs okay so if at all we can use symbols to convey our information then we uh, his, sorry this is not a histogram okay this is a pictogram pictograph pictograph is a very good way of going about it okay if you see a graph like this this is a you can also call it as a line graph or a ogiv ogiv is nothing but a cumulative frequency curve so what happens over here is that it explains see it is these are classes okay and these are cumulative frequencies so um, this means everything uh, up to 90 okay so if this is 
class boundaries from 10 to 19 means this is representative of everything up to 19 0 to 19 not just 10 to 19 but rather everything that would be uh, if, uh, the number of frequencies that fall under 0 to 90 that much is represented as a dot over here so data values are explained on a horizontal plane axis and their cumulative or their relative frequencies um, or their even their percent frequencies are marked on the vertical axis so that is the main thing so each of these data points right each of this data point will tell us the value of the readings or the uh, data from 0 or the starting axis till that particular point that is that is an O give. So we can have less than O gives and more than O gives that is O give is the uh, the upper limit okay uh, sorry O give is the limit. So less than O give means in x axis we will have the upper limit and more than O give means we will have the lower limit. So if we are representing data which is Say for example, if you take a point on your x-axis, if the data on the y-axis represents value which is less than, that is till that particular x value, then it is a less than O give. But if it is all the data combinations that are more than your x value, then we say it has a more than O give. In that case, your x will be your lower limit. So anything within that will be more than your uh, x and anything outside it will be less than your x like that. Um, this is a histogram if uh, so this is almost similar to your bar graph right but the thing over here is that in a histogram these uh, the width of your rectangle represents your class interval okay but in your bar diagram or your bar graph the width of your rectangle does not represent anything it's just the height that matters but in a histogram the width is the, of that rectangle corresponds to your class interval and the um, height definitely is your frequency. So that is the difference between a histogram and a bar graph when you say it visually. But it's, uh, again, histogram is also a representation of uh, ranges of data, groups of data itself. Now, if you take a histogram and you mark the midpoints of those, you, uh, though, see, if you mark the midpoints of each of those uh, what you can say the histogram bars right and if you try to draw a line linking those different bar graph sorry midpoints like this see these are these dots represent the midpoints of each of your histogram bars and if you draw a line joining those midpoints you will get a frequency polygon okay so these are the basic types of graphs and in the next video we will try to see how to plot these graphs using a real data set, okay? So, I hope you like this video. If you do, then do uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It will help our community grow. It will help me also. It will encourage me also to keep making more and more videos for you guys. So, if you can show your support through a share or a subscription or maybe a like or leave a comment. If you need any more explanations on any of these topics, do leave a comment. If you have doubts, leave a comment. You know, it will help us to grow as a community and become better. So, thank you very much and I hope these videos are being useful to you. See you in the next video.